Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel and today we are going to see another interesting topic on threat safety and what are the problems that are you know, caused by you know threat when we are using it in parallel. Okay? If you read the first point, it's telling like my scripts working fine when I run them in, in an order or sequentially but failing when I, when I ran them in parallel. You know, have you ever faced this issue? This is happening because we are not, you know, uh, providing proper safety for our threats. Okay, so what is causing this issue? And this is what we're gonna see in this whole video. I will get back to the point three, two, three, four, and five later. But for now, if you have ever fa faced this issue, we need to understand why this is happening. Right. So first, we will understand what is the cause. So without understanding the cause, it is re really difficult for us to fix the issue. Right. So let me go there to explain you guys. So this is a you know a test we have created so far. So first, let me run it them in uh, you know in sequential order. See, my thread count is just one, and my test started. First test completed, and I second test is also completed. Both the test card pass. Everything is good. But now I want to run them in parallel. Because obviously at end of uh, automation, we want to run the test in parallel, right? So, so parallel equal to methods. When you mean parallel equal to methods, what it will do, it will go and check the classes, okay? When it go and check the classes in the home page test, we have one test. And in the login page, we have one, one more test. So we, we have two test methods, okay? So, so what test engine will do? It will run these two, two test methods Okay, in the parallel. Suppose if there are more methods, like four methods, then it will pick the first two. Okay, since we have given the thread count as two. If you change the thread count to four, then all the four will be ran in parallel. So thread count and the parallel parameter decides how many tests needs to be ran in parallel and what needs to be ran in parallel. Again, you can pass class or test uh, based upon your needs, but for now we are providing it as methods, right? So now let's try to understand the, you know, understand what's happening the issue now i changed the thread count to two now both the chrome started you know at the same time okay one got passed and one in one one case it's just google.com okay it didn't find it has to enter some value here but it didn't do that okay so and one one chrome window is not even closed okay if you go to the uh, test engine results it's telling you know, uh, stale element reference exception. Again, if you if you ever know about Selenium, what is this exception is all about? It means the element is not there in the dome. Okay, this is a uh, this is happens when you mean stale. It, it's like people call stale food, which means the food that it got that got spoiled, right? So this element is somewhat spoiled. It's not available now for the Selenium to operate. So that's why we call it as uh, stale element. The element becomes stale now, like a food. Okay, so. Uh, still our variable is pointing to that. So that's why we call it a stale element reference exception. So we are, we are getting this exception. Now, uh, we will first understand uh, with a simple diagrams, okay? Um, okay, now, so I hope you all see my screen. So here, if you notice, uh, if every program in Java, you know, works on the basis of thread, okay? Thread, you can consider thread like this, okay? It, it registers all the methods, you know, that it is calling. Okay, first it will come to your main method. Okay, so, and then it it will it will call the next method. In our case, it is calling the init driver. Then it will it is calling driver dot find element the test method, and it is calling the after method. So whatever the operation it is doing, it will register in a threads. Okay, so consider this is a thread stack. Okay, this is a thread stack we have. Okay, so what this is the example program. So if you notice here, we have a main method. I am calling the a method a. Okay. So what will happen in the thread stack? So what will happen? Uh, a you know, it will register that I have called this particular method. Okay. If you notice, we have a frame for this. Okay. So we call it as frame. So th this thread basically uh, uh, has what and all the methods it has called to come to this particular state. Okay. So if it is, if now it is calling a so it has registered a in, in, in its tag and then it, it has uh, it called that particular method in the method a we have certain things okay we have int a equal to 5 and we also can consider this as uh, maybe selenium okay selenium string b equal to selenium 
now we have two local variables when i mean local variables they are only for this particular uh, method a okay this variables uh, scope dies within uh, this particular method so basically in java all the local variables are thread safe okay that is one of the main reason but the class variables uh, static class variables were not thread safe okay that's what we are going to achieve right that's what we are going to find okay to to explain why local variables are thread safe i have drawn this diagram okay so method a is registered now so what will happen it has a local variable called int a equal to 5 so it has something like this okay in, in inside that particular thing in the in the thread stack itself it acts like a memory okay we have two memory one is stack memory and this this is a stack memory and the heap memory this is the heap memory okay consider like this so in the track if if the variable the local variable is of primitive type okay when i mean primitive it's like you can int char byte long boolean you know all these things are primitive the basic entities okay so when if if you find a local variable of primitive type it stores both the you know the variable and the value in in the stack itself okay so the even when there are multiple threads operating okay this, this consider this is thread 2 okay and this is thread 1 okay this thread thread 2 cannot find or interact with this thread 2 uh, thread 1 same way thread 1 cannot interact with this thread 2 okay this you cannot find this uh, variable a okay so that's the thing now uh, we have called a now string b equal to selenium okay so when i mean string it is not a primitive type it's a, it's a class in java so what it will do it will go and create a object in the heap memory so this is the object okay so consider heap memory okay this is the heap memory since this is a string so it will there is a separate area to store string in a heap memory okay so it will what it will do it will go and create selenium here okay and this particular reference variable will be pointing to this uh, particular guy okay so so b is here the reference variable itself will be stored in the uh, stack but the you know uh, the hash code the, the way how we can uh, you know pick the uh, object from the heap memory is is hash code the actual hash code will be stored in the, here okay so it knows where where this particular object lies okay if you, hash code is not exactly the memory address but it's actually uh, you can consider like a unique integer used to by jvm to find the object uh, with a, with a you know fastest time you can you can imagine like that but for now if if the hash codes are same it means uh, it can, it mean that you know it's pointing to same object but it's not the two all the guys but but predominantly yeah now we called the method a at the after performing some task it is again calling method b okay within a itself it's calling method b so this is a stack right so stack means you can imagine okay you have a cone like this okay and then you enter some uh, rings here okay this is the first ring second ring third ring and when you want to take out something you have to first take out this okay this is called as first in last out okay or last in first out whatever okay first in last out or last in first out okay the same way the whatever the method you called the a method is here now okay this is the a method okay now a method is calling b method so it's it registered here okay now b b has again a primitive value so is local is a boolean so it's a, it's a primitive type right so is local and true is all here okay my object so i am also creating a you know a reference uh, object for uh, my object class so my object the reference variable itself will be stored here but the object is stored in the memory okay in the heap memory now this hash code decides where understands where it is and how to find this okay why i am explaining all these things okay just to tell you if you have a local variables okay whether it is a primitive or a ref, you know reference one you know if it is a primitive it is entirely stored in the stack okay if it is a reference one the variable itself is stored here but the object is stored in the heap memory without the hash code okay without uh, without finding where the object is the thread to another thread cannot come and operate on this okay that's why this is much safer okay threads cannot you know uh, 
interact other threads cannot interact okay so that's why the local variables are predominantly thread safe okay suppose now the method b is completed what will it will transfer the control to method a now okay so what will happen okay this entire thing will go off the whatever the last method that came in is now getting rid of the stack now we have only this so when it is getting rid whatever the variables it had okay they also become obsolete okay so when this variable my object become obsolete okay this this object in the heap memory okay it has no one pointing to that so what will happen java has something called as garbage collector and it will be picked for garbage collection okay so that's why whenever we are using a, a local variable it is thread safe okay by by they have done a certain implementation that makes it thread safe okay good but in our case we are using something so okay if we go here okay we are using a class level static you know a variable the driver is a class level static variable right so this guy okay this guy will be stored entirely in the heap memory the variable as well as the object both will be stored in the uh, heap memory itself so whatever available in the heap memory any thread can operate okay any thread can come and operate okay that's the reason this particular guy okay whatever th thread one is trying to open a url now thread two comes and tells okay you don't open a url try to find the uh, search box and enter automation okay each one is giving different task okay consider you are in a home i like to watch your you know your favorite sports or you know cricket we want to watch india versus australia but your spouse comes and tells you know she wants to watch some uh, songs or some serials okay obviously she would end up winning the game but same way in our case okay one particular test got completed okay the other one was still you know is 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 untouched okay no one is pointing to this no variable is pointing to this right so same way if there are multiple people trying to operate on something okay it doesn't know what to do that's the reason why our test got failed okay again to simplify maybe i'll take another image okay we have two threads okay in our case we have two threads okay these two threads trying to operate on a st static class variable okay at the same time because we are running it in parallel when we run it in uh, sequential there is no issues okay because there is no other thread uh, to alter the uh, pointers so what we have done we have two threads trying to operate on a static class variable so it doesn't know Uh, which one to operate so end up uh, you know uh, operating on only one and leaving behind one object without even touching so what exactly happens thread one comes if thread one is fast so when you are running two threads in parallel okay guys sorry it may be little confusing but uh, please have the patience okay so when when you are starting two threads in parallel you cannot decide which thread will be you know little faster okay not a uh, both will be at the, exactly at the same time they'll have a you know microseconds gap between them in that case uh, suppose consider thread one comes uh, using this cl static class variable it created this particular object okay now we have one chrome window here this is chrome window c1 with within the next few microseconds thread two comes using the same static class variable and it created another object here now in, instead of this variable pointing to this uh, chrome window one the thread 2 made it to create a new uh, chrome window okay this is the chrome window second chrome window and made uh, you know made it to point to this particular object so what happens the link between these two things got removed now so when thread thread one comes and tells hey static variable now go and uh, you know load the url and find the automation no it's not responding so it is still pointing to this particular guy okay it doesn't know it has to give the uh, operate on the object one so that's what causing this particular issue okay to simplify if you have multiple threads any thread you know can operate on some object that is available in the heap memory provided they have the access okay so in our case the same heap memory is interacted with through two threads okay this is a problem that is causing all this issue okay now let's get back here and understand you know some, some simple things that we need to remember so all local variables of primitive types are stored in the thread stack itself that's what we 
told before right all the local variables of non primitive types okay even your wrapper classes like you know uh, boolean wrapper class we have character wrapper classes right for each of the primitive types even those you know will be stored uh, you know the object will be stored on the heap but the reference will be stored on the stack whenever the method you know method uh, you know call ends these you know local variables also uh, gets removed so that's why they are all thread safe and most importantly th this whatever the va uh, variables available in the thread one will not be available to the thread two now an objects member variable is stored in the heap along with the objects itself so when i mean objects member variable it's your instance variable okay it, it, since this is an instance variable uh, it will not be stored in the thread so uh, it is also stored in the heap along with your object okay so even it is a primitive type or reference type that doesn't matter okay if the thread has an access to an object okay it also means it has access to its members whether it is a variable or a methods right but pretty importantly the thing that is causing issues for us is the static class variables are stored in a heap and most importantly when you mean static it is common to both the objects okay it is not uh, only specific to one particular object okay suppose consider you have a company okay called uh, uh, cds and uh, okay something like this okay you create multiple instances so, excuse me guys okay you have multiple instances okay um so what happens so i am creating a new employee object okay while creating the employee object i am uh, you know giving uh, values like a name some name as uh, f something and some id okay id is 1 2 3 but the company name you know i am pausing you know is common so i am just giving a cd okay instead of, instead of creating multiple instant values if you create this company name variable as a static it going to remain the constant for all your objects right that's why we use static for the effective memory management okay so so that's the reason okay we use a static variable and we can directly assign it there instead of you know passing it from here right so so that's the use of static if you if 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 something is static it is common for all the objects that's why we have two objects two chrome driver here and both of them uh, you know is accessed using a static class variable okay that's what causing the whole issue now we have understood the issues well now in the next section we will see how we can solve this behavior until then you all have a very good day bye